Hey guys, so you probably already know, but Canadian released a, an escape room today called The Hopper, and if you haven't already seen it, you should, but if you have, I'm gonna be debunking it, cause it's kinda terrible, uh, and the way I'll debunk it is by speedrunning it. So we'll start the run speedrunning this exactly the way you'd expect, just going through everything like I know the puzzles. Since I do, I downloaded the map, but the first problem with Canadian's run is he does the boat dropping through the floor glitch by placing it on the hopper first and then breaking the hopper. You don't have to do this. You can just place a boat on water at the right angle and it'll just fall through the ground. I don't know why he doesn't do this, but it saves you so much time. I literally don't have to go through the effort of breaking the hopper. I can just place the boat right here and drop through. The next problem is Canadian just falls for some reason, as if he completely forgot that you can do this glitch with the boat where you can slow down your falling. What's so great about this is given enough time, if you get close enough to the hopper with this glitch, you can literally just pick up the golden apple and trident from here. This is probably the hardest part of the run, but literally you don't have to do any disconnecting at all. You just grab the apple and the trident and you eat the apple. Then the next thing I have to do is a little bit tedious. I have to go swim through the lava to find the snow bucket. But think about this, I don't have to do any disconnecting, so it's like 10 times faster. Then I have to immediately strafe southward and go to where the netherite block is. But for some reason in his video, it's a netherite block, but in the world download, it's deep slate tiles. It's like he wanted it to be quicker to mine for some reason. I don't think Canadian realized that while it is faster to mine deep slate, that does mean that I'll have the fire resistance effect for a lot longer. In fact, I still have the effect by the time my run ends. So we'll just wait for this to mine and as soon as it finishes, I'll place the bucket and pick up the lava. Now I don't blame Canadian for this next part because it was his first time running through it, but he opened this hopper on the ceiling to grab what was inside and then broke it. But obviously it's a lot faster to just mine the hopper and pick up the item afterwards since you have to break it anyway. So we'll just wait for me to break this hopper since I, I dubbed in this audio afterwards. So um, then as soon as I break the hopper. I was a little slow with this part, I'll admit, but we'll kill the zombie exactly the same way you did in the video. But the next part of this run is actually ridiculous, because if you remember in his video, there's a sign that says deposit item frame here. And obviously he doesn't deposit it, he just breaks the sign, right? Because why would you throw away your item frame? Well, actually, that's the most optimal thing to do. So when I finish climbing up with the snow, I'll get up here and I just throw the item frame like this, and it's faster than breaking the sign. That's because I actually don't need the item frame, I brought these signs with me. Now let me show you the exploit I can do with these signs that basically breaks Canadian's map. I just discovered this this morning basically, but you can place the signs right here on this wall. And then if you sort of do a bit of very careful shifting with the snow bucket, you can get the snow bucket right here and it's literally just a quad to get to the bedrock. So I just have to land this quad and I have access to all the TNT. And like we saw in Canadian's video, breaking the TNT doesn't actually blow it up. That was a complete lie. So I can get as much TNT as I want. I only need like a stack about. So once I get about a stack of TNT, I'm going to start staircasing up towards the exit. And now you'll see why the TNT is so useful. For some reason, Canadian says in his video that you can't just blow up the, uh, the grass blocks that are moving back and forth since you have nothing to power it with. But obviously we have that lever, right? So when I finish nerd pulling out of here, I can just break the lever and then place a TNT in front of the lever and pick it up that way. It's literally that simple. It only takes one TNT block and I get the lever. And then all I have to do is go up the staircase and I can place the TNT and the lever in front of the grass blocks and destroy them. And it's that simple. I literally escaped this map in less than four minutes. Then I just have to get some ender pearls and I can quickly pearl out. So that's my debunk of Canadian's map. You can basically cheese every single room. It's hilarious. And what the funniest part is, for some reason Canadian knew about every single one of these exploits and he just decided not to do them in the video. It's almost like he thought it'd be more entertaining or something thing if he did it the more convoluted way. I don't know. But yeah, Canadian's a pretty dumb escapist. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.